science delusion is the belief that science already understands the nature of reality in principle, leaving only the details to be filled in. In our thousands of years long quest to understand the universe and how it works, the easy part is now over. There is nothing else that we need or will ever need, even a million years from now, to understand what is going on in this room right now. And unfortunately, the worldview aspect of science has come to inhibit and constrict the free inquiry, which is the very lifeblood of the scientific endeavor. Hi, fellow science lovers. In my last video, I laid down the very foundations for future exploration. But I think we should dwell a bit longer on these very foundational differences between determinism and the Persian worldview. This will help us in the future when we uh, explore the questions of causation, uh, the nature of reality, and eventually also the free will. In this video, I want firstly to deepen my critique of determinism and to form a better argument against it. And secondly, and maybe more importantly, uh, attack the claim that determinism is the only view that agrees with the scientific worldview. But there's a conflict in the heart of science between science as a method of inquiry based on reason, evidence, hypothesis, uh, and collective investigation, and science as a belief system or a worldview. Determinists often claim that their view is the only rational and scientific one. In fact, if you aren't a determinist, they say that you are undermining scientific observations and scientific knowledge. And this view is also widely accepted. This can be seen uh, in conversations where the deterministic worldview is often labelled as the scientific worldview. I object this and argue alongside with Peirce that determinism is just a hypothesis. Determinism is just one possible interpretation of the scientific observations and scientific data. In this video, I argue that you can be completely rational and completely scientific without being a determinist. First, we need to clarify the concept of probability. Now, the determinist claim that we use the concept of probability only due to insufficient information. All of our scientific knowledge is probabilistic because all of our observations and measurements have some kinds of minute errors in them. So proba probability makes sense because with it we can predict cer certain kinds of phenomena. But in reality, behind the curtains, everything is completely determined. In other words, for a determinist, probability is not an objective phenomena. It is nothing real or active in the universe. Probability for a determinist is a tool with which we can navigate through situations where we don't have the sufficient information. We can do with much less information and still make wonderfully precise predictions, but not perfectly precise predictions. So because of that missing information, there's another sense of possibility that comes in, just the possibility based on ignorance, mm. that you make predictions on the basis of incomplete data, they're going to be probabilistic ones, not deterministic ones. So for a determinist, the assessment of probabilities is a feature in science only because complete and exact knowledge of the state of the universe at a given time is beyond our capacities as finite inquirers. If we had the complete knowledge, all events could be explained by previous states and with the immutable laws of physics. We wouldn't need probability at all.
Even when we seemingly have a source of randomness, it can theoretically be compromised. As we get better and better at measuring the world around us, true randomness becomes more and more elusive. For a determinist, probability is not only unnecessary, it is also dangerous. They claim that if reality wasn't deterministic, events would be subject to change. And this would mean that all events could not be explained as the necessary outcome of previous states and the laws of nature. In other words, there would be certain events that defy the laws of nature. And for a determinist, this is a nightmare. Neither you nor I nor Daniel Dennett or any of our friends at this level think that there is some magical spark that lets us overcome the law of physics, right? So if there is probability, there is chance. And therefore, Peirce presents a hypothesis of objective chance, where chance is seen as a real phenomenon in our universe. Now, a determinist would obviously disagree with this and argue that if there is objective chance, all events would be unpredictable, chaotic and incomprehensible. Actually, the whole project of science would be undermined because in order to have rational explanations of things, events must occur lawfully rather than chaotically. Therefore, the determinist argues that the hypothesis of objective chance is unacceptable for any rational mind. Think about the concept of randomness, of something happening that's not caused. It doesn't make sense. There, you know, there's a cause to everything. Now, Peirce does not deny the existence of laws. Quite the contrary, in fact. But what he denies is the determinist's claim that the denial of objective chance is the only rational thing to do. He thinks that objective chance is not only a completely legitimate scientific hypothesis, but that it in fact accords better with certain evident phenomena than determinism. So why Peirce has some doubts about determinism? So the determinists deny objective chance because they see that it would render the universe unintelligible and therefore out of the reach of scientific inquiry. They further argue that the history of science provides us with an assurance that events occur lawfully rather than chaotically. The history of science also shows the superiority of deterministic explanations. Look at Newton, look at classical mechanics, they say. But Peirce points out that the history of science is also a history of questioning various axioms that were once seen as eternally true. If we could say that modern science began when Copernicus questioned the fact that the Earth was the center of the universe. And since science has questioned even more fundamental truths, like those of Euclidean geometry. Non-Euclidean geometry shows that the angles of a triangle are not always 180 degrees. In the same manner, the axioms of determinists are not untouchable. What about the order in our universe? If we accept the reality of objective chance, doesn't that mean that our universe is chaotic? For Peirce, the question is not is there order in our universe? Because there certainly is. The question is, is our universe ordered by deterministic laws? Meaning that every event is precisely determined by previous conditions? Or whether is our universe ordered by statistical and probabilistic laws? In which case there are events that are irreducible in their own nature. To any law. In other words, Peirce argues that the order in our universe could be a matter of degree. Peirce leaves space for both order and chaos.
What you've got is all the interesting stuff about complex systems out there are all functioning eight out in the chaotic realm and what science has been spending forever doing is looking the other way and pretending it's not there. Determinists are committed to the methodological principle that an event is rationally explained only by showing how it follows deterministically from certain initial conditions. Such a view requires a world which is seen as a deductive system, as a machine. Furthermore, they argue that this method is universally applicable. It is precisely in virtue of these claims that some determinists hold that the question of the validity of determinism is the question of the scope and authority of reason itself. If you didn't believe that, if you believe that even if we knew everything about your atoms and molecules, there's still something extra that makes me able to affect my motions open and over and above that, then here's a simple experiment. Jump out of the window of a tall building and use your free will to change the motion of your center of mass. Peirce agrees with determinists that rational inquiry is utmost important thing and the only way to form rational beliefs about our universe. Peirce further agrees that the principles of rational and scientific method, rightly understood, are universal and binding on all knowers. What Peirce disagrees with is the notion that determinism is the only way to conceive the nature of reality. Determinism is just one possible hypothesis and there are other forms of rational inquiry. But the question remains, how can rationality hold in a universe in which there is objective chance and which is guided by statistical laws of nature? Consider a coin toss. Peirce thinks that it is perfectly acceptable to explain the fact that a sufficiently large sample of coin tosses shows roughly an equal number of heads and tails by appeal to the hypothesis that the occurrence of heads or tails on any given toss is subject to chance. Determinists will reject this view on the grounds that chance events, by not being determined by any laws, are inexplicable. To say that the coin landed heads by chance is to say that there was no reason for it. Therefore, this would render the event inexplicable and would further violate the principles of science, which seeks to explain all possible events. However, Peirce does not claim that chance is the cause of events, because explanation by chance is no explanation at all. To say that this or that happened randomly or by chance doesn't explain anything. To say that the coin landed heads by chance tells us nothing. And Peirce agrees with this. Chance doesn't explain why things occur as they do. So, what is the role of chance then? We can now take a sneak peek on causation. Deterministic causation is very simple. Certain initial conditions combined with a deterministic law results in a certain exact event. That is, an event follows from a deterministic law. There is no chance, no randomness, Everything is exact and precise. But notice how deterministic causation is dyadic, meaning that it has only two parts. This is something we will return to in future videos. On the other hand, as Peirce sees it, chance is not a property of events or their causes, but of their relations. Chance enters into explanations not as an initial condition, but as a relation that links probabilistic laws with their outcomes. Here we get a first glimpse on a completely different view on causation and on reality in general, a view which is triadic rather than dyadic. Again, we will return to this when we explore causation with more detail. 
The issue of chance is then whether the operative laws in our universe are deterministic or merely statistical. Peirce asks what is the degree of exactness that events are governed by laws. In this way, the orderliness of our universe is a matter of degree. So there can be order even if this order is not absolute. But if rational explanation presupposes and needs a law, how can we explain chance events? Now, it is very important to notice that chance events are subject to the laws of probability, which create regularities among phenomena. Consider rolling a dice. There is chance involved, but still we could predict that approximately one-sixth of the time we would get a six. Or think about poker. Now, poker players don't deny that there is an element of luck involved, but good poker players can use their laws of probability in their advantage. So even though there is chance involved in dice rolling or in poker, we could still predict the outcomes to a certain degree. Therefore, the hypothesis of objective chance does not violate the scientific principles as the determinist claim. There is simply no ground to the claim that objective chance or chance events would render our universe unintelligible. With the laws of probability, we could explain and predict chance phenomena. Doesn't the empirical evidence show us the superiority of determinism? The determinists make much of the claim that science has uncovered many laws that hold without exception. For example, with classical mechanics, we can infer and deduce the subsequent state of things from its prior state. Peirce does not deny that science has uncovered many laws in nature. But what he disputes is that the observational evidence would confirm a deterministic worldview. The determinist claim that the laws of nature bring about certain exact values. However, our measurements are invariably imprecise and come always with a degree of error. Therefore, no observational evidence permits inquir inquirers to determine the measurement values exactly. That is, with an error of zero. Intrinsic in there was an absolute clear opinion as to what variability is, which is to say it's noise, it's junk in the system, it's a pain in the rear, and it's stuff you want to get rid of. Determinists would say that the measurement variation derives from our finite capacity as inquirers and that the underlying reality remains completely exact and determined. Variability is discrepancy from seeing what the actual true measure is. However, as Per sees it, such a claim is not supported by the observational evidence. There is nothing in the observational evidence that would preclude the suggestion that the statistical variation in the measurements is due to the operation of statistical laws of the universe. In other words, the measurement variation could be partly caused by probabilistic laws and chance. To be fair, by the same token, we can neither conclude from our measurement variation that our universe is governed by probabilistic laws our observations simply don't tell us which one of the hypotheses is true. The question remains open for further inquiry. The determinists often fail to appreciate all the irregularities in the universe. For example, we can say that there is uniformity in ripe oranges in the sense that they are all sweet. Yet, for each of these oranges, there are indefinite number of relations that are true only for that particular orange. 
it came from this tree, it came from this soil, it grew on a particular orchard, and so on. And therefore, Per says, when it is remembered that everything in the world is related to every other thing in countless ways, it is clear that there is no end to the excess of accidental relations over those which present any regularity. The point is not that determinists could not account for these accidental relations, but rather inasmuch observed irregularities clearly outnumber the observed regularities. It is far from obvious that empirical evidence would confirm a deterministic worldview, where every irregularity could be explained as a result of strict and exceptionalist laws. Although determinists would claim that these irregularities could be explained by further inquiry into these deterministic laws, this is just a hypothesis which shouldn't be taken at a face value. It could also be that there is real chance in our universe and real spontaneous accidents. For Peirce, then, chance is not contradicted by observational evidence. He agrees with the determinist that there is evidence of lawfulness in the universe, but denies that this would rule out the possibility that our universe is irreducibly statistical. In fact, the evidence is far less clearly in favour of determinism than determinists usually suppose. So, these two hypotheses could both explain the observed phenomena. Why should we then prefer the views of Peirce? Is there something that determinism can't explain? This is the question we are going to explore in the next part of this series.